and welcome to today's math lesson. We're carrying on with money and we're going to be looking at adding money. So we're going to move straight on with our do now, um, which is going to be column addition. So press pause now to complete your do now and we'll get on straight away with the answers. Right, let's look at these answers. So it's column addition with regrouping. Again, this is stresses the importance of our number bonds and looking at how what no, how our product when we add numbers together. The better your mental arithmetic and your mental add addition, the quicker and easier you're going to find these equations to solve. OK, don't worry, we're going to be doing some more practice on these. So moving on to today's lesson, we are going to be adding money. Adding money. So let's have a look at our star words for today. Remember, my turn, your turn. Money. Pound. Pence. Bar model. Part. Part. Pull. Fantastic. Right. I'm going to look at an example. I have drawn here. What do we see here? I've drawn a example of my part, part, whole. Remember, addition is when we add two parts together. One part plus another part equals our whole. So we are always going to be trying to find out our whole today. So I've got here two amounts of money so i've got two parts one part two part my first step when i'm adding my money together is i need to if i've not been given my amount i've just been given coins and notes i need to work out how much i have in each part so looking here at my top part i have five pounds and 20 pence i'm just going to write this here Then I have in my bottom part, my second part, I have one pound, two pounds. And 30 pence, so I have 20 and 10 and 30 pence. Now, some of you yesterday might have been writing in decimals for your pounds and pence. We would rather that you wrote out your amounts like this because we're not doing decimals until next year and it can get a little bit confusing. So I need to add these two amounts together. My the first step I do is I am going to add my pence together. I'm going to add my pence together. Just like in column addition, we would start or any form of addition, we'd always add our ones together. I'm going to add my pence because if there's going to be any regrouping, which we'll see later, regrouping from pence into pounds. If I start with my pence, it will be a lot easier to do. So 20p add 30p is equal to what? 20p add 30p is equal to what? We should be able to quickly do this in our heads or we can count on. Let's count on. We're going to count on 30, which is the same as three tens from 20. 20. So we're starting on for counting on from 20. 30, 40, 50. So it is 50. But we can also do, just look at our tens column, we can also do 3 add 2, which is equal to 5, and then with our 10s, it's 20 add 30, which is equal to 50. So I'm just going to write here 50p. So let's look at our pounds. We have 5 pounds and 2 pounds. 5 add 7 is, 5 add 2 is equal to 7. So our amount is we have 7 pounds and 50 pence. I've used my part, part, whole model, two parts, one part, two parts to equal our whole. Let's have a look at another example. So here is another example on our board. So we have, first of all, 
added are we have got here two amounts. So we've got here two amounts. And so the first step to success is working out what I have in each part. So what do I have in my part here? I have a five pound note and I have a six pound, a, a one pound coin, which means five add one is equal to six. So I'm just going to write six pounds here. Then in my bottom part, I have what? I have two pounds and then I have 50. There's a 5p, 55 and a 2p. 55 add 2 is equal to 57. So I have 2 pounds and 57 pence. So I need to now add my two parts together to make my whole. So remember, we're going to add that pence first. So 57 add 0 is equal to, oh, it's equal to 57. So I know my pence is 57. And I can write my and before then, just to get myself ready. Then I'm going to add my pounds together. Six add two is equal to eight. So my answer here <clears throat> is eight pounds and 57 pence. I've added my part, my part to make my whole. So you are going to start off your first part of your independent task is to complete the part part whole models. So you've got here your two parts and you need to make your whole. So I would say your first step to success is going to be identifying the value of each of these parts because they're in note or coin form. You can write those down, you can draw a part, part, whole model, or you can just write the answer, whatever you find easiest. Press pause now, and when you're ready, press play, and we can, you can check your answers. Here are your answers. So you needed to, first of all, to have a look at your different parts, and you add your two parts together, and this will make your whole. So hopefully that was fairly straightforward because our amounts, we did not have any regrouping or anything. Let's carry on. At a beach shop, a bucket and a spade costs £4.22. A cap costs £3.61. How much do they cost all together? So with our word problems, remember with our word problems, our first thing we need to do is work out what is going to be our operation so we need and what are we going to be actually what numbers are we going to be dealing with with that operation so that is going to be done by looking at our keywords so at a beach shop a bucket and space costs four pounds and 22 pence ah oh, there's an amount i'm just going to highlight that a cap costs three pounds and 61 pence. Ah, oh, that's another amount. I'm just going to highlight that. How much do they cost all together? Whenever I see that word all together, what does that mean? What does that mean? Absolutely. It always means addition. It always means addition. So what do we think my equation is going to be? My equation is going to be adding four pounds and 22 pence and three pounds and 61 pence so remember what are we going to add first we're going to add our pence now 61 add 22 you might be able to do it in your head but i'm going to just do a little bit of column addition here just to make life a bit easier 1 add 2 is equal to 3, 6 add 2 is equal to 8. So I know my pence total is 83 pence. Then I'm going to add my pounds together. 4 add 3 is equal to 7. So the total cost of them all together, so the total cost of the bucket and spade and the cap is seven pounds and 83 pence. You've got other ways that you could do this addition, which in, include you could convert the whole amount into pence, 
both amounts and add them together. I find this way for when we're not regrouping, this is the most simple way. So let's have a look here. We're going to be looking at some more regrouping, some, re some regrouping here. So one pound and 50 pence is equal to two pounds and 55 pence. What's gone wrong here? See, I've got a big green highlighter here. Something's not quite right. What do we think has gone wrong here? Think about what we did yesterday when we were conversing between pound and pence. What's gone wrong here? Have you spotted what's gone wrong here? You can tell me out loud what they've done. We've added the pence and the amount of the pence has gone over 100 pence. And remember, key fact, one pound equals 100 pence. And we, we don't say we have this many pounds and 105 pence. We don't say that. We then need to remember, we need to regroup. So what do we need to do with our 105 pence? I'm just going to partition it into 105. Our 100 pence turns into one pound. So that means we need to add it on to our amount of pounds. So three add one is equal to four. And, and five pence. I'm going to show you an alternative way to deal with that question. Is, as I said, you can convert everything into pennies. So pence. How many pence is two hundred two pounds and fifty five pence? It is the same as two hundred and fifty five pence. Remember, two pounds is the same as two hundred pence. So two hundred and fifty five. One pound is equal to 100 pence. Add 50 pence is equal to 150. Five add zero is equal to five. Five add five is equal to 10. I've got my regrouping here. Two add one is equal to three. Add my other one here. 405 pence, which we know is exactly the same as four pounds and five pence. So you've got two strategies here. You can partition. You can always have a look and see if the addition of your pence goes over a hundred that you need to, you could partition your amount into one pound and have so many pence and just add that on. Or you can convert everything to pence and add it that way. I don't mind. Whatever you find is more simple. So. You've got some opportunity to practice your regrouping and just carrying on practicing your addition. So your last question here, 3B, is definitely going to have some regrouping. So if you're not sure, maybe rewind the video and have a look at that. So complete your tasks. Again, if you want to use a part part whole model to help you, that's fine. Just show you're working, please. When you're ready, press play to see the answers. Here's your answers. As you can see, I'm still keeping everything partitioned into pound and pence. Looking at this bottom sum, I've had to, I'm adding my 55 at 55 pence. 55 at 55 is the same, equals to oh, 110, which I know, looking at my, what I did before, I partitioned. I can partition my 110 into one pence, into one pound and 10 pence. And then I add it like that. Or I convert it all into pence. 655 pence at 255 pence. Whatever feels simpler and easier for you. Right. Ah, the good old bar model. Couldn't do a part, part, whole lesson without looking at a bar model. I know sometimes we get afraid of bar models, but they are just the same as our part, part, whole model. One part, two parts, 
one part and another part is equal to our whole. They're the same thing. So, this bucket and spade costs three pounds and ten pence. Flo buys it and a teddy for six pounds forty-five pence. How much has she spent in total? So, my first step is I need to complete, fill out my bar model and know where everything goes. So, my bucket and spade cost this and my Teddy's cost £6.45. £6 so, looking back, I know my two amounts in this question are £3.10, £6.45. I'm looking for how much she spent in total. Total is one of those words. If we see that, we know we're going to be doing a addition equation. Absolutely. So, if I'm doing an addition equation, that means I'm trying to find my whole. So I'm going to be adding one part to another part to make my whole. Part, part, whole. Right, so my two parts, I'm going to put them in here. Three pounds and ten pence and six pounds and forty-five pence. First of all, I'm going to add my pence. Forty-five at ten. Oh, I'm not going to touch my ones. 45 add 10. I'm just going to add in my tens. 45 add 10 is equal to 55. Remember, I, if I can just do a quick one in my head, calculation in my head for my, my pants, I'm going to do it. 6 add 3 is equal to 9. So in all, Flo has spent 6... Nine pounds and 55 pence. You can see I've got my two parts adding together to make my whole. How much altogether? Let's have a look at this. So this time we've got our bar model field completed. We've got our two, one part and another part. And the part we don't know is our whole. Exactly the same as the question before. So that is going to be, again, part, part, adding them together to make our whole. So let's have a look at this. Six pounds and 50 pence add one pound and 53 pence. So starting with adding my pence together, 50 add 53 is equal to, so three add zero is equal to three. Five add five is equal to 10. I've gone over my 100 pence. What do I need to do here? 103 pence is the same as what? Yes, it is the same as one pound and three pence. So you could almost think that this, um, you could almost, we can almost break this equation then into another step. So we can do six pounds, because we've added our pence together going to write our pence there to show you up. So six pounds add one pound is equal to what? Six add one is equal to seven. Then I'm going to then add these two numbers together. Seven pounds add one pound and three pence. Remember adding our pence first. Three pence add zero pence is equal to what do you know? Three pence. And seven add one is equal to eight. So my answer, my two parts adding to my whole is eight pounds and three pence. As I said, you can just you can just convert them all to pence and add them straight away together, which is one of the reasons why we practice our column addition. I don't mind whatever you feel more comfortable in solving a part part whole for adding money. Again, you have got an independent task to carry on with. Um, so we've got a word problem. You need, you must use a bar model for question four. I want to see your bar model. I want to see your bar model. Likewise, for five, I want you to copy and complete the bar models. Five, you're gonna be given 
the you've been given the parts. Four, you need to work out your parts. So press pause to complete the task. And then when you are ready to carry on, press play and we'll check some answers. So flow buys some sunglasses for six pounds and fifty p. She also buys a key ring for three pounds and seventy five pence. How much does she spend in total? Use a bar model. So that word total means we know it's an addition. So quite rightly here, we know that the sunglasses and the key, key ring together is going to give us our total. So just adding here, remember we're adding that pence first. Oh, Mrs. Turley's made a mistake here. This is why we should always check our work. It's not £10, six add three, actually. Mr. Tully obviously not had enough coffee this morning. So we're going to do again 50p at 75p. We're doing that partitioning. Zero add five is equal to five. Five add seven is to 12. We've gone to 125 pence. So six, so 25 pence add nothing is equal to zero. Six pounds add three pounds is equal to nine. Add another pound, 10. So breaking that question into a couple of parts will just make things a lot easier in your addition. And then completing the bar models below, we've got no regrouping, so they are fairly straightforward to complete. So this was an example with regrouping. You just needed to get your mind going. Right, let's have a look now. It's reasoning time. Oh, love a bit of reasoning i am trying to get us to practice reasoning together as much as possible because i know i remember in class when we're doing our banded sheet most of the questions will come from reasoning going i don't understand what to do here so here is your reasoning question give it a go eva has six pounds to spend so she's a number of items here what can eva buy with her money so with a reasoning question, you need to first of all think what operation I need to do. What am I trying to find out? Take it from there, press pause, give it a go. And then when you're ready, press play and you will be able to, we'll be able to go through the answers together. So, this is an example of what we call trial and error. So we add the specific, uh, we add the specific numbers together. So we add the cost of the different items together and work out if they're above or below six pounds. So it's a real opportunity to practice our addition of money. So I've done my addition. So I can see, for example, you can either can buy the yo-yo and the socks the yo-yo, the ruler and the chocolate, the socks, the ruler and the chocolate. If you come up with any other solutions, that'd be fantastic. You can put them on Seesaw. So one, so now we've completed our reasoning. If you still want an additional challenge, remember the challenge is not compulsory. Here is another one. So Dora bought these muffins. The muffins cost 35p each. How much did Dora spend? Tommy bought three times as many muffins as Dora. How many muffins did Tommy buy? How much money did Tommy spend on muffins? How much more did Tommy spend than Dora? So you can see this is a challenge with multiple steps. You're needing to solve some your repeated addition of money. Give it a go. Post your answers on Seesaw. I'm now really hungry and want a muffin. Have a great day, Year 3. Looking forward to seeing your answers.